Out of nowhere, a gigantic fortress appeared, forcing the Power Rangers to take matters into their own hands. Sworn to protect the city and safeguard the citizens, these denizens of darkness proved once again why heroes are not be trifled with. The following day, people all over the country were riled up to witness the contest between the two factions. The Red Keeper made his way to the fans and continued to cheer for everyone watching. Meanwhile, innocent bystanders were being warned in case chaos erupts during the battle with the monsters. Sounds a bit dramatic, don't you think? They tried recruiting him to the Rangers and even used seductive tactics to get their way. Soon after, our MCD made his way to the arena where the diabolical monsters made an appearance. The crowds continued to boo them as they looked goofy standing in the middle. Might as well use them as scarecrows, am I right? That's when the corny group of rainbow-colored fanatics showed up and started calling themselves the Dragon Keepers. Apparently, the crowd bought their little act and gobbled up every bit of this charade. The monsters launched into action, but were thwarted by the Guardians who were launched into the air. The Keepers tried acting like this was a challenge and kept on giving a show. The monsters did not disappoint either and unleashed their trump card by transforming into Decepticon's lapdog. Hold up, aren't the Rangers supposed to be the saviors of Earth? After the children and parents motivated them, the Keepers went into action and the monsters got into position. But they seemed to have rehearsed this bit and stood there as the Rangers were about to dismantle them. Just then, Fighter D decided to clap back. Prior to the battle, inside the monster's fortress, the lackeys were stressing out about a new concept monster for the exhibition battle. They kept on brainstorming new ideas and felt exhausted since they had to go through this showdown weekly. Do they really get their asses handed to them every time? How pathetic is that? It seems that the Rangers invaded their territory long ago and brutally massacred their bosses, thereby forcing them into submission and servitude. Now that they had a weekly quota, one of the fighters came up with a sketch of a possible monster, and they kept on going back and forth, suggesting new concept ideas. These bunch were hopeless, honestly. Luckily, Fighter D was there to save the day by suggesting they utilize a tiger to strike the fear of death unto the people. Seeing as how confident he was and how passionate he sounded, everyone decided to accept his suggestion. D was all about that villain life and world domination. This guy is the real deal. Later on, another fighter, F, came by and tried talking him out of the idea. Conquering the world was no longer an option since the Rangers exist and their power was absolute. They were bound to serve them as slaves, and that was that. Afterwards, Fighter F started transforming into a tiger and he looked horrendously terrifying. D was looking on in disgust, since he knew this was all an act, and their lives were as good as rubble. Back in the present, the Rangers noticed how Fighter D was still standing, and he decided to flip the script and pull a number on them. His irrational choice caught the Rangers by storm. Nevertheless, these guys were beasts and were prepared for the smoke. Red Ranger took center stage while D was running like a wimp and continued to curse humanity, Despite his valiant efforts to stand up against the tyrants, D stood no chance against the might of these champions. They destroyed his core and left everyone debilitated. Meanwhile, D was trying to regenerate and turn back into his human form. That's when he met the beautiful Yumeko. Hold up, was she the Yellow Ranger? Also, did she know D was part of the Monster Association? This is starting to sound spicy. All of this began way back when the monsters invaded Earth. They were immortal in theory, until humanity created the divine artifacts capable of decimating them. The Red Ranger started supporting the new recruits, who included D and a bunch of other zealous trainees. It seems D was in it for vengeance, and kept on reminiscing about the day the Rangers wiped them out. Afterward, he went to the receptionist and started asking some suspicious questions about the Rangers. You can tell this guy is obsessed. Soon after, the red-haired Shanks who recruited him earlier Hibiki came alongside the yellow feline, Yumeko. Oh wait, Yumeko wasn't the yellow ranger. Rather, she was inside their group. Does that mean every ranger is given their own lackeys? While D went out to lunch with them, the fighter monsters were busy playing tic-tac-toe and were startled to witness a helicopter descending. It was none other than the red and blue rangers, who acted buddy-buddies then demanded answers for the betrayal in the arena. The Blue Ranger was not in a good mood and was about to rip their heads off. 
They quickly snitched on Fighter D, but he was nowhere to be seen. The Red Ranger insisted on showing the others mercy and stationed two of his lackeys with them to serve as surveillance cameras. What an unfortunate outcome for the monsters. One of them tried fighting for his privacy, but was given a mean right to silence him right up. The Red Ranger insisted they fall in line, or else, and continued to demonstrate his true might. God damn, are these guys anti-heroes or something? Meanwhile, D was making a fool out of himself while Hibiki and Yumeko started explaining what exactly the Rangers' battalion do in the city. From cleaning up the town to protecting citizens, these guys live to protect and serve. While discussing matters, D almost slipped up and revealed the monster tournament was all an act. Fortunately, Yumeko came to his aid and claimed it was nothing but a conspiracy theory. Out of nowhere, a kid came to take a selfie and everyone gathered up for the picture. Upon seeing this, Dee's envy grew even worse, and the two younglings left him alone with the kid. Don't worry, Dee only wanted to memorize Hibiki's face from the picture that was taken. Don't forget, these guys were able to mimic other life forms. Dee then went along with Yumeko, who looked mad fine if I might say. She'd be an excellent waifu. Dee then asked to deliver the letter personally, and used Yumeko to unlock the door. However, his worst trial was still up ahead, since he didn't know what the Red Keeper looked like without a mask. Another douche named Shun stopped him in his tracks and continued to antagonize him. Had it not been for Yumeko, Dee's disguise would have been blown out of the waters. But this didn't stop Shun from forcing the truth out of Dee, who has had an awful performance playing Hibiki. He was too soft and acted like the wimpy fighter monster he was. I wonder what would have happened to him had Yumeko not intervened. Well, I guess we'll never know. He then took the letter off their hands and tried recruiting the gorgeous Yumeko to his team. I'm guessing he had a crush on her. As D left their fortress, he felt depressed and bummed out about the whole incident. Just then, the real Red Keeper, Susei, came along, and this guy looked menacing. He knew how to carry himself and received a mouthful from Hibiki's clone, who couldn't keep his cool. Later on, Yumeko asked for his knife and used it to cut him up. Wait a minute, how did she know? D was flabbergasted by this revelation and was taught a brutal lesson. After he was compelled to obedience, Yumeko came really close and asked to form an alliance with him, who knew she was badass. Soon after, the real Hibiki came along and warned them off a monster attack within the vicinity. D used the opportunity to escape, and elsewhere, Fighter F was caught lacking by Shun and the Red Squadron. That's when Susei, the Red Ranger transformed and challenged him to a duel. After giving a heroic speech, he used his divine artifact to summon a horde of dragon salamanders. F had no option but to accept his fate, and that's when the dragons obliterated him from the face of the earth. Not so immortal, are we? D and Hibiki stood there paralyzed, contemplating Red's true power. We were then flashed back to the past, when the Rangers made the monsters an offer they couldn't refuse. This memory caused D to storm off, and that's when Hibiki revealed the truth of his identity. Wait a minute, how did he know? Oh yeah, he overheard their conversations. This caused D to lash out in anger and threaten their entire organization. What are you doing, idiot? He's going to rat you out. Fortunately for D, Hibiki shared the same viewpoint as Yumeko and wanted to change the world from the inside. D wasn't having it and vanished into thin air. He then met up with our seductive damsel, who should be given more screen time, honestly. After hearing him squabble about world domination, she beheaded him again and enjoyed doing it. Would you look at that? A sadistic girlfriend? She sounds way better than my ex. Yumeko then turned the tables by informing him how she's the master and he is under her mercy. The moment she decided to reveal his secret, he is done for. Quite the tactic to twist his thumb. She then proceeded to explain the importance of the divine artifacts and how stealing them was the key to crumbling the entire ranger organization. It seems she planned the entire thing and told him how the divine artifacts were unguarded during the usual Sunday showdown. This was the perfect opportunity to strike. As such, D began to mimic Susei in hopes of posing as the Red Ranger. He managed to get inside and was guided by Yumeko, who started blabbering about her high school life. Is this really the time to discuss useless drama antics? As D walked past the cadets, no one suspected a thing, until he met up with Shun, that is, who was protecting the divine artifacts. 
Shun tried interrogating him, since this man never drops his guard, but D held his own and made it through. Once inside, D found the artifacts in plain sight and started underestimating the rangers. That's when Shun shot him from behind, claiming he possessed a different scent than usual. Talk about a weirdo stalker. He kept on shooting him endlessly, and Shun used the opportunity to toy with D as much as he wanted. This guy had some issues and picked up the divine artifact to use it. However, D pulled out some dynamites, promising to blow up the place to kingdom come. He used the opportunity to strike Shun down and carry the artifact through the vents. As soon as he got out, the Red Ranger was waiting for him and a fierce battle ensued between them. However, I wouldn't call this a battle, since D stood no chance. Even so, he tried using the environment to gain an upper hand, but Susei was too powerful. D was feeling aggravated and told the Red Ranger to come at him with all he's got, and that's when a helicopter showed up with a live broadcast of the battle. This guy is all about that famous life, and this upset D, who simply wanted a clean fight with no drama or acting. However, the Blue Ranger came to thwart his plans alongside the others, who ganged up on D. He then gave the order to obliterate D from the face of the earth, and Blue volunteered. However, the rest of the Rangers suggested they take him hostage and change up the script a bit to arouse the audience's intrigue. Even so, D refused, and as Blue dealt the finishing blow, the explosion left everyone impressed. However, something felt off, and as Susei was about to grab his divine artifact, he realized it was a fake. God damn, Yumeko actually pulled it off.